So let's go back and study Charles Babbage, 1791 to 1871. Charles Babbage, Wikipedia, considered a father of the computer. Babbage is created with inventing the first mechanical computer. Okay? Primer Magazine, if you use a computer, you have Charles Babbage to thank. Velocity Guide, Charles Babbage is popularly acknowledged as the father of computing. AskTheComputerTech.com, the first mechanical computer was invented by a mathematics professor in Cambridge, England named Charles Babbage. Charles is even considered by many people worldwide to be the father of the modern day computer because of his con inventions of the mechanical computing engine. All right, it's pretty important, I believe, if the Lord said, Know of whom thou hast learned them. I think it's very important for us to look and see who gave us this information. Now, I will give a disclaimer for a moment. Some of the root technology was invented by not only Christians, but fundamental Christians. If you go and study Faraday, a King James Bible believing premillennial Christian uh, that had so much in common with what we do today. I mean, they even they even went to church on Thursday and had lunch after church on Sunday. I mean, it was just a little strange. But that's where you got electricity from as, as far as the modern uh, understanding of, of some of the ways to harness it from. Morse was a great premillennial leader with the Morse code. And, and so a lot of the things that developed were from Christians opening their Bible and serving God. But you listen to me. There is some satanic inspiration involved in a lot of what we see today as well. And so I'm just going to give you the information and you do with it what you think. But I do want you to fear the Lord and I want you to prepare yourself and arm yourself against what the devil's trying to do. All right, who's the father of the computer? Babbage. Let's go back from Charles Babbage's writings. That's what I say. See, if somebody tells me Charles Babbage is the father of computing, I want to obey Second Timothy and find out. Let me see who this man was. Let me see what he said. Let me see what he believed. Passages from the life of a philosopher, 1864, Charles Babbage says this, I gathered all the information I could on the subject. He's talking about the devil. And I was soon informed that there was a particular process by which the devil might be raised and become personally visible. I carefully collected from traditions of different boys the visible forms in which the prince of darkness had been recorded to have appeared. After long thinking over the subject, although checked by a belief that the inquiry was wicked, my curiosity at length overbalanced my fears and I resolved to attempt to raise the devil. Naughty people, I was told, had made written compacts with the devil and had signed them with their names written in their own blood. And they had become very rich and great men during their life, a fact which might be well known. But after death, they were described as having suffered and continuing to suffer physical torments throughout eternity. Another fact to which, to my uninstructed mind, it seemed difficult to prove. Having closed the door, and I believe opened the window, I proceeded to cut my finger and draw a circle on the floor with the blood which flowed from the incision. I then placed myself in the center of the circle and either said or read the Lord's Prayer backwards. This I accomplished at first with some trepidation and in great fear toward the close of the scene. I then stood still in the center of that magic and superstitious circle, looking with intense anxiety in all directions, especially at the window and at the chimney. My uninstructed faculties led me from doubts of the existence of a devil to doubts of the book and the religion which asserted him to be a living being. Now, this man thinks that when he sat down, shed his blood and did a satanic ritual, he says the devil didn't show up. And then all of a sudden he said, so I don't believe in the devil. I don't believe in the Bible. And I believe that none of it's true. Hey, I think the devil did show up. But I don't think he manifests himself with horns and hoofs and a pitchfork. I think the devil showed up. And who knows, he might have even got possessed. 
1865, the British Quarterly Review says the Ghost Club, the Lunatic Club, is what people called it. Doubts respecting the existence of a devil led to Mr. Babbage's doubts respecting the authenticity of the Bible. It sounds like the devil was involved in that. How about you? You say, how do you know the devil? Because when the devil came to Eve, he said, hath God said? Doubt the authenticity of the Bible. Then he said, thou shalt not surely die. So Mr. Babbage, here he is. He doesn't believe in the Bible. He doesn't believe in anything that he has to fear. Then when he says, nor will it astonish any reader to learn that. When at Cambridge, Mr. Babbage and some of his college companions formed themselves into a ghost club and made it their duty to collect evidence on the subject of apparitions. If they heard of a phantom, these spiritual detectives speedily put themselves in pursuit. What was Babbage doing? Now, I believe this is before Westcott and Hort's ghost club that's also at Cambridge. But you need to understand that all of these new Bibles came from Westcott and Hort text. And Westcott and Hort had a ghost society where they sat around and performed seances. And when a medium was possessed and would begin to speak all of her mess, they would investigate it as they sat around the seances. Your new Bibles come from that wickedness. But this is Babbage having a ghost club as he sits around and performs seances, talks to spirits. And then guess what happened? he starts getting inspiration for a computer. And it starts coming to him. And he starts forming it out and thinking it. That ought to give you a little bit of fear. When you begin to consider how the devil's using that technology today. I know it can be used for good. But you have to beware of how the devil intends to use it. And you have to beware. Because if you do not get on guard about this subject. You're going to end up. being destroyed by the devil. There was one more man that's called the father of the computer and he picked up where Babbage left off. His name was Alan Turing. He died in 1954. He's called the father of computer science. He was a homosexual. He was an atheist. And he killed himself by cyanide. In 1954, it's interesting that Apple Computer has a logo with what's traditionally in fable said to be the forbidden fruit. And they have a logo with a piece of that apple missing. That's not all. The apple is covered in the rainbow which we know is a symbol of God's mercy and covenant with man, but has been used today in perversion by the homosexual. What Apple did was flip the colors of the rainbow upside down and gave them in reverse order. So you have an apple with a piece missing, which is basically the pursuit of rebellious godhood 
then you have a backwards rainbow. And of course, they love to say, oh, we didn't mean anything by it. Oh, they're making too much money off of Christians. But there's something about that symbol. They said there's nothing that they've ever seen that has ever been used by a company that people wanted to get tattooed all over their body. But all around the world, people are taking that symbol of the Apple computer and they're getting it tattooed. They're putting it on their car. They're putting it on their T-shirt and on their body itself. I think it's plain that anybody can see there is a satanic agenda going on here. And the devil loves to communicate in images and pictures and everybody knows what it means. You could tell a bunch of gullible Christians, oh no, the guy who designed it said it was just an accident they stumbled on it. You can believe that nonsense if you want to. I wonder if you would walk around with an upside down cross on your shirt. Would you do that? Would you allow one in your house? But you'll allow Eve's apple glorified. I know it wasn't an apple, but they think it was. It's still a picture of man's antichrist rebellion. The ultimate picture of we are going to obtain godhood by our own technology. Let's fast forward to Thomas Edison, who died in 1931, inventor of the phonograph, the motion picture camera that I said was quickly used for perversion. It got so bad that uh, the nudity and horrible violence and perversion got so bad that they had to come up with a code and that drove all the perversion underground. And finally you ended up where lust didn't satisfy anymore. They had to mix it with violence. That was the 60s. And then finally that didn't satisfy anymore. So in the 70s they had to mix it with torture. People actually go and eat popcorn and watch people be tortured. Folks, where are we at now? 80s, 90s, 2011. Where are we at now? Where you're at is you've got a bunch of perverts running that street out there like you have never hardly seen on the face of the earth. Maybe in the days of Noah is about the only time. And they're after little kids. Thomas Edison, you've learned about Thomas Edison in public school, right? Oh yeah, you've been you've had Thomas Edison stuffed down your throat. Thomas Edison, Thomas Edison. The man who wrote Natural Pet Healing, our psychic spiritual connection says, "You need to understand that a number of incredible respected people have been members of the Theosophical Society through the years. They include American inventors such as Thomas Edison." And the man also that wrote the Wizard of Oz series of books. They're proud that Thomas Edison was a member of their Theosophy Club. Now, what was Theosophy? Theosophy was a satanic organization. Their magazine was Lucifer Magazine. Blavatsky was a medium in touch with spirits. And Blavatsky basically cut her hair off and put britches on and basically uh, said that I am in contact with spirits through automatic writing. And a lot of people started uh, trying to get in touch with her and learn from her. And Thomas Edison became a disciple of Blavatsky. In Theosophy magazine of 1925, it says Thomas Edison is one of the early members of the parent Theosophical Society. You can see his actual card of a member of the Lucifer Society. You can see his Lucifer Club card. Go back to 1921, Francis Grierson, Psychophone Messages. It says the, the word psychophone was first suggested and used by Mr. Francis Grierson in a lecture I heard him deliver before the Toronto Theosophical Society in 1919. One year before Thomas Edison announced his intention of devising an instrument which he hopes will serve to establish intercourse between our world and the world of spirit. What was Thomas Edison working on before he died? 